organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Thanks for tuning in to your latest edition of Daily Island TV, your television news, sports, and weather source for the Daily Island. I'm Katie Reber, broadcasting from the Daily Island Newsroom. Iowa City was initially found in its location because of the access to the river. Yet with the construction of the dam in 1906, that idea has been forgotten. Steve Long, the Community Development Coordinator, has been assigned to alter the dam under Burlington Street to reestablish the use of the river. Daily Island reporter Adam Lacey has the latest in a two-piece series on the reconstruction. A sound that might never be heard again. The dam underneath Burlington Bridge has been scheduled for renovations. After a $60,000 loan from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the goal is to recreate the dam into more of a tourist and recreational attraction. The goal is to put stone slabs in place of the now existing dam to create a downstepping effect so that way boats and tubers will be safe to go over the dam. Now with these changes could come problems. There's some big questions left to be answered. What happens to the power plant or the hydraulic slab, if any? What about all the environmental issues that could come with this? One group that could be affected the most are the fishermen who use this spot as a popular place to go catch fish. One such fisherman is Daniel Alberhaske, who sees the changes as being bad for his fishing. And it's going to be great for family, but not for the fishers who go there for the certain fish that go in that certain area. See, the uh, fish there, they like the mud, they like what's there now. They do that, a lot of more boaters, swimmers, people, it's just going to scare them all away. Make sure to check out the second part of this piece airing a week from Thursday when I try and tackle some of those bigger questions. What will happen to the environment and what happens to the buildings next to the riverfront? On a side note, make sure to have a great 4th of July, everybody. For the Daily Island TV, I'm Adam Lacey. And now for your sports update, here's Daily Island TV sports reporter Rachel Bedell. Even though kickoff for 2012 Hawkeye football season is still 59 days away, Kirk Ferentz and staff are on the recruiting trail. Iowa currently has 15 verbal commitments for the class of 2013, compared to the five at this time last year. Head coach Kirk Ferentz commented on his approach to recruiting and your overall trend in recruiting for college football at a press conference last week. Uh, we, we, we're a little more aggressive maybe, perhaps, but not, not dramatically. And uh, I think it's really more a reflection of what's going on nationally. And I, I haven't seen the numbers or studied them, but uh, uh, my guess is it's just things are moving fast, right? Scout.com four-star recruit David Kenny, a 6'2", 255-pound defensive end out of Pike High School in Indianapolis, looks to have some of the biggest potential of the 2013 class. However, these players will not arrive on campus until next year, and in the more immediate future, Hawk fans will look at the 2012 class as they suit up for the first time. Three of Iowa's incoming freshmen had four-star ratings on Scout.com. Among them was running back Greg Garman, who was arrested for marijuana possession last month. Ferentz had little to say about it at last week's press conference. Yeah, there's really nothing new to, to say right now, and uh, uh, it'll be in the courts here at some, some point here in the near future, and then after that... Uh, that process takes place, and I'll have a little bit more to say, I think. I'm Rachel Bedell, and that's your latest sports update. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek into Thursday's edition of the Daily Iowan. Here is Daily Iowan Metro reporter Amy Scarnulis as she discusses an article she is writing for tomorrow. My story is about the decrease in juvenile arrests throughout the state of Iowa. From 2007 to 2011, the decrease has been 20%. Um, Iowa City officials can accredit this decrease to programs set up for juveniles throughout the city, such as curfews, and in Cedar Rapids they also have programs where police officials go into the schools and talk to minors to keep the lines of communication open. You can read Amy's full article in Thursday's Daily Iowan. And before we leave, let's take a quick look at the local weather forecast. It's going to be another hot one on Thursday. It looks to get up to 101 during the day with heat index values as high as 112. In the evening, we'll see some cloud coverage move in and a low around 78. Expect the hot temps to stick around until the weekend when we'll see a 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms. 
We'll finally see some relief from the heat next week with highs in the 80s. That's your latest update from Daily Iowan TV. You can check us out anytime online at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great night.